Guys, it's so good to be back again in the studio to see you all. Penn, I'm really excited. This this season, we're going to make a push to try to be together in person. And I'm like longing for the day that you're in person with us again. But this is second <laughs> longing. best. We're going to make the longing. push. Longing, <laughs> yeah. We'll, take we'll see if Penn will yeah. actually. <laughs> Nav and I are going to make the push. Yeah. Penn is going to resist it. We're actually going to just fly to New York. There, and, there's like... got to be a push and a pull. That's a reciprocity. <laughs> you know? it's... Uh, it does feel yeah. so good to be back here recording. I have like first day jitters, it feels like. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's anxiety, Soph. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's what that, that is. That has right. nothing to do with what's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> this year, we're also trying to move to full episodes on YouTube. Should we take a moment to say hi to the camera? Oh, right. Hello. I literally forgot. Yeah. Me Hello. too. Hi, everyone. Hope you like Hello. this new format. To those of you just listening, you're uh, you're missing out. Yeah. 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 Subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, <laughs> listen so we can get that. That's right. If you're doing one, do the other. Because <laughs> it just helps us. <laughs> they hit different. They hit different. Yeah. 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 It all hits Guys, different. what have you been up to over the last month? January. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about January 2023. Let's do it. You know, I saw a billboard yesterday that was for like a, a bank of some kind. And it said, uh, here's to a happy and simple 2023. And I thought... Boy, do they have their finger on the pulse. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought, man, that is on point. Somebody's not getting paid enough. And it's the bank employees. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I celebrate the new year in March, March 21st, just because. But (laughs) uh, I just want to be like... (laughs) Just, just like to do my own like thing. That. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually do celebrate the New Year March 21st. But this year, January 1st, did I decided to take it as the new year, like to accept that and set certain goals. And I don't usually do that. I don't usually like have resolutions, but I've been working towards them and feeling good actually accomplishing most of them. Um, and I feel like more purposeful and entering the year with like a new sort of lighter spirit, hopefully. That's awesome. See, we got to have the push pull. You yeah. I mean? yeah. We got to have it. Yeah. <laughs> I also set certain goals this year and I don't usually follow through on my goals, but this year I've been really trying to stick to them and I I've been like sort of posting on my Instagram about this morning routine that I have started and I made a little calendar so that I can check off the days that I actually complete it and I've like really I've brought my, you know, 7,000 Instagram followers in on this process and people are invested and I was really kind of vague about what my morning routine was and so people started asking me. Like how vague are we talking? I just said morning routine. (laughs) As vague as possible. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. People started asking me because because on the calendar you can see I don't do it every day like Mm. like it's quite it's like half half you know maybe 60 40 and um people are like well what's the routine and so I've messaged a few people back and told them what it is they're like Oh, that's really simple. That's, that's very simple. And, and you don't get to that every day. Do and you're you? not at least at 90 huh. times. No, Something, no, interesting. You know, small yeah. steps, small yeah. steps. But that's where I am. I'm just taking January as it comes. Um, but it's been good. Another amazing thing that's happened in 2023 Tell me what. What is, is that it? you, season four, has just premiered. Oh. I want to share a disclaimer. This is legit, guys, and you cannot say that you were not warned. This episode is full of spoilers. We are not yeah. hiding anything. So if you have not watched the first five and you plan to, do not listen to this episode until you watch them because we're going to go into detail about specific plot points. Yeah, okay. just wait until you binge it. You know, just wait like eight hours. You know, <laughs> yeah, come here to come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're not watching it, in a binge if you're not watching it straight through then i don't know who you are yeah you're probably not a viewer yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah wait wait well let's not get started so excited i can't wait i know me too but you know who wants it more (laughs) our advertisers bye (laughs) hello again or should i say hello wow we do it was sort of half it was do it again do it again that's really good (laughs) (laughs) This is this is what you want to hear. You want to, mm, 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 mm. Hello, you. Yeah, okay. that's a good. That's a good one. I can't believe we didn't that's even good. have to ask for that. No, yeah. thank you, Penn. Yeah. This is this is really is a new year for 2023. you. Twenty twenty three. Listen, you guys yeah. set goals. I make them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I can start it off. Start us off with the first question. Um. So this season, Penn is quite distinct. 
um, in terms of genre. It's the first one that doesn't really feel like it's also a rom com. And I wonder. Wait, rom com? You don't think the previous I, no, seasons I have felt I like rom coms? No, I fully Sorry, understand does that feel like a slight? It's not. <laughs> no, no, I love rom coms. No, 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 no I not love a slight. Rom-coms. Not a slight. Yeah. I just love the. I just. It's just I. <laughs> You're like that's not you know, real romance. He's a, he's a, yeah, no, it's, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm a broken record at this point. But, yeah. No, I know okay, rom com, yes, rom com with a twist. All right, well, a, lemon well, twist. a dark rom com. Yeah, yeah. This season Ooh, doesn't quite better. feel like a rom com. There's not right. as much romance. There is some, but not as much. Um, and what do you think about that? How do you think the audience is going to react to that? And honestly, were you guys nervous to to make quite a big shift? For better or worse, every season ends in a in a in a really intense sort of spectacular fashion, mm-hmm. right? And and every and it's a cliffhanger usually, I think, right? So um, every time I'm like, how how are they gonna keep it compelling? How <laughs> mm-hmm. is it not gonna get tired? The, I know they're asking the same questions, and they always do. And this time, I d- I trusted that would be happening, but as we were doing it, I realized this is really a different genre. Like these, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the device of suspense has to be used differently in mystery mm-hmm. and than it is in horror. It's not the same. Um, and I, it's it's technically mystery now, right? Wouldn't you call yeah. it? Yeah, like yeah, it's like a whodunit. Like it. it's, yeah. it's a murder. It's a murder mystery. So yeah. yeah. So um, I know that. Yeah, we all. Well, we all, meaning like the few of the f- the, the few left over from season. Three and then really just this whole new British cast and crew who were just like, yeah, you know, we're here doing the thing. Aren't you the is, only is, guess, one right? left over from season three? <laughs> yes, actually. There's, yeah, there's yeah. no one, just you. Yeah. Yeah. No, Marianne. Oh, well, Marianne. Yeah, clarification. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, right. clarification. But yeah. I don't, you know, I, oh, that's right. We're full of spoilers. Yes, Marianne. Yeah, yeah. We can, yes, Marianne is in this. Good, good one, Sophie. Yeah. Finally, yeah. I got something right. <laughs> Guys, last time we did an episode about you, I got skewered. People yeah. were like, how could you not know that love was a serial killer? Yeah. She killed this person and this person and this person. I was like, yeah. oh. no, but you I mean, knew. Fair. You just weren't defining her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer. I knew. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but you knew. I mean, what do you mean? No, you, no I you, forgot. You, I forgot about just, all the <laughs> 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 killed. See, that's what I mean. You're like, yeah, it's a rom com. Yeah. 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 Like, but you're not the only My one. My best friend's wedding really and you. Best rom coms right. of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, can we just, oh, Julia Roberts. So good. And Hugh Grant. Her. Was yeah. he in My Best Friend's Wedding? No. No, no, no. But he was in <laughs> he most was in of the other ones. Well, close is. enough. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> most is of the she other in My Best Friend's Wedding? <laughs> yes, yes, she is. <laughs> All right, cool. Was I in it? <laughs> yeah. I did. As a young baby. <laughs> cool. So, so you guys, kind of the creators, and you also understood that the show, in order to stay fresh and, and keep suspense, you had to address the suspense differently. So it's channeled as a mystery rather than horror, which is interesting. That's an interesting... I never think of you as being horror, but... Yeah, it's well, it's not horror, but I think it has these aspects of... Did I say horror? You yeah. did, but it kind of yeah, is. It, yeah, it's yeah. not... I mean, there are horror aspects, thriller? but no, it's more... It's a thriller, a thriller, but it doesn't use suspense mm-hmm. in the same way because the whole point is that you know. Yeah, that, that's that, true. It's never a mystery. Yeah. I think it's, it, it's, it's a mystery like any story where it's going, but it's not, mm-hmm. it's not categorically a mystery. So it was different. And I mean, without... There are spoilers for the for part two that we actually can't disclose here, mm-hmm. so so that that's that's sort of that's a two parter question that we can revisit. Yeah, for our second bonus episode. Yes. No, actually, I don't know that we are doing oh, that. No, we have we part. Are we? Will we? I just have to say, guys, I have seen part two. Finally, there's a perk to being Ben's best friend. <laughs> we got early access to the season, and I'm just gonna say, part one. You guys have all seen it. It's awesome. It gets better when you watch part two because it actually there might be certain things that you're like, I think this doesn't make sense or there are plot holes and they're all addressed in part two. And in my opinion, part two is like even better than part one to me. Like, I agree. A lot, no, I, like I, I, I loved agree. part one was really good, but part two was like juicy. Mm. My one concern when I found out they were releasing it in two parts was like, Oh, does part one make sense without part two? Like it'll make sense, but is it going to be as like, ah, as as people typically find the show, you know, is mm-hmm. it like ah, it did the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, you have to you have to be patient, guys. You'll be rewarded when you watch part two. When have- in doubt, trust Netflix's algorithms. Yeah, yeah, they made the decision for some reason. <laughs> yeah, they made the decision for us all. Yeah. Let them decide. <laughs> I have to say, I really did like the um, the plot device of of you like writing and researching a mystery novel Mm. and then some of those characteristics coming up in the actual plot. And I loved Nadia's character. 
love Nadia. I really Nadia. love Nadia. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I actually love about her character and and those scenes is that in a way, what I love is that throughout the whole, I, th- I it might be true of part two as well. It's hard to distinguish for me, but but um. I love how the show is more than ever commenting on itself. Mm-hmm. Like if if you if you if you listen to everything they're saying, like the first line of the show is saying something about the dubiousness of the plot or the something along those lines, mm-hmm. and and then and then throughout the first couple of episodes, the the, the writers of the show are, of the show are sort of of the show, the show, <laughs> the writers of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they're they, they're doing this really deft, fine line walking, you know, between mm-hmm. being too self-referential but not mm-hmm. enough. And I think it's what saves it, you know. It's what mm-hmm. always kind of saves it. Mm-hmm. Um, so personally, I think that device is uh, is a saving grace. And she's the she's the evolution of the Paco Ellie. Thing. Yes, mm-hmm. totally. You know, yeah. the, I like that that person keeps getting older. The person yeah. you're mentoring and taking care of. So, Penn, we've established that season one, two, and three, to some degree, feel like rom-coms, to some degree, dark, twisty rom-coms, and season four doesn't. So I would say that seasons one through three also are all examining love in different aspects, and I think season four is not so far. This is true. What is the underlying theme of season four, if it's not love? Well, I mean, it's the eat the rich thing, right? And to me, it's there's always this aspect of, like, thinking of things through a literary lens Mm -hmm. so it's not the most all-encompassing like social justice lens Mm -hmm. um but i think it's i think it's more about class isn't it it's about Mm -hmm. it's about wealth and it's about privilege a bit more it seems that seems to be what joe's focusing on but to be honest i mean you guys watched it more recently than i have so you are probably more keyed into that right Mm -hmm. now because it's been a bit for me is that what do you think I agree. I mean, I think that in every season, Joe is situated amongst obnoxious rich people. That seems to be like you can rely on that. But this season, they're the most rich and the most obnoxious (laughs) they've ever been. (laughs) And I do think that the theme of wealth is is actually treated as a theme more than in the other seasons. That's just context. I think this season, it's a theme. So I agree. I think it's saying something about privilege and class. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one to address because the because the messaging, the theme, the exploration, the whole story, it's not it's not over, you know. Yeah. It's really not over. And by the way, it wasn't written to be in two parts. It makes sense actually because there is a clear distinction, but it wasn't written to be that way. Mm-hmm. So it is a little bit I I think people should not necessarily feel like they know what it's saying yet. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um then which actor do you think is most or least like their character? <laughs> I thought you were going to say most talented. Yeah, or most least. annoying, <laughs> least annoying. No, well, I actually do have most obnoxious. Uh, it's oh, me. Sorry. No. Uh, uh, what is it? Most. Which character is most or least, most and least like their character? Which, Which actor? actor? Oh, most and least like their character. That's a, that's a tricky question to me. Um, you how much time that? do we have? <laughs> uh, most and least like their character. No one's like their character in that the, the, they're playing especially bad people. And we, yeah. they would, um, this is a fun thing, because I so often spend so much time, even by myself, when it's a, a you know, the call sheet's full of everybody from 1 to 17. By the way, I'm number one. Just in, case anybody <laughs> was, uh, in case you wondering. didn't know. In case you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, He's number three on uh, this podcast, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. keep him humble. I'm, I'm four under David. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, there will even be a lot of time that I'm on set alone. Everybody else is in the in the cast tent, um, which is a literal like just tent <laughs> for the cast. Like Great um, British Bake Off. Not that nice. <laughs> it sounds it's actually where they yeah. It's you. like it's often kind of <laughs> just it's a you know it's, everything it's a, in uh, England is filmed in one place. <laughs> one being tent. being on a set is often like being on a construction site where only part of it is really beautified, and then the rest of it is just yeah. kind of like eh, put that there, eh, put that there, and it's just you know there's like nails everywhere, um, and dust, wood chips. Uh, the the supporting cast this year. Uh, we're all getting along so famously and, and mm. we're in so many scenes together and they, they had such great chemistry that they, they're they all kind of like their characters minus being terrible. Right. So like they were all... And, and because 
they're the cast and we're shooting, let's say, some big party scene, but for the time being, we're shooting my thoughts. So then it's just me. I'm, you know, doing all that stuff alone as I always do. Alone in a room full of people. Hi. Um, <clears throat> they would often forget that, like, oh, they're, we're shooting this. Because they're also, you know, they've never been on the, they've not been in the other seasons. They're not accustomed to it. They naturally would forget, like, oh, we're all here except for Penn. That must mean they're shooting, like, th the show, you know. And, so, <laughs> and, and also because I also don't have lines. Mm. So it would just be quiet. And they would be just making each other laugh and ribbing each other in a way that I was That's just like, cute. they're perfect for this. They're like, the, all of them, every single one of them, they seem to, and this is weird with, with cast. It's sort of like you emulate the dynamic that's on the page or it's just your cast because that's what you bring, you know? Right. And, and then they write to it. And so it's, it's, hard a, it's, to separate. A, it's kind of a, yeah. Hmm. But um, I would really say they're all, uh, like, what does it mean to be like those characters but not be terrible people? Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, Nadia but and I would Tati, say great people in the show. Yeah. Too. I would say Amy's actually not like her character. She plays, um, uh, Nadia. Amy, Amy, Amy is a self-proclaimed like old woman in a young woman's body. <laughs> uh, she's I can like, see that. She, she really, that. she That's really, funny. so in, so in some ways she's really not like her character. Um, Pen, what was it like working opposite Charlotte Ritchie? And there's kind of a shift. Like, she feels like a different romantic lead, and the romance plays differently. Can you tell us sort of if there's, like, a background to that? Yeah. So, you know, part way into the season, I remember having a call with Sarah. And th and this is, I think this is, to me, a credit to to her, to, 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 the, to, the, to the other writers. Um, Sarah Gamble, the know, creator? Yeah, Sarah the Gamble, the creator, mm -hmm. and Greg Berlanti, co-creator, and then the whole team, you know. Um, I think they were really trying to figure out, like, okay, we're doing so much new this season. So much is new. Uh, new genre, new location. And even though that changes, it's like, it's a new country. There's a new culture. Yeah. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. There's a lot happening. A new look. You know, we've covered half of Joe's face. Is it going to work? <laughs> uh, you know, just all this stuff. And and th I think what they were trying to do was was be like, well, we can't just do the same thing with a woman. So therefore, like, let's make them hate each other, actually. Mm -hmm. And it, and and in, in initially, I think it wasn't even that hate that you just want to. It was just like they really just don't like each other, mm -hmm. and it's there's like a real. And so on the page, as troubling as it was, it was compelling. But I think they were realizing along the way, like, you know, oddly, because this show is kind of a rom com. I mean, oddly, mm -hmm. it it has to have a heart. It has to have some kind of heart. And without an obsession for Joe to um to 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 long for and charm and chase you know because in this joe is really trying to get away from something and get mm -hmm. away from himself most of all you know and and then and then this and then this person he's like so it, it actually became like an imperative after we'd shot a lot of it to be like wait a second this joe kate thing is 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 just not working for this show in the way that we want. So so they so they really did like retool a lot. We reshot some stuff. They changed the nature of the character almost like in a kind of slightly fundamental way. Hmm. So, you know, and it was tricky. I think even Charlotte and I were feeling it out and we were having conversations with Sarah Campbell the creator. We were just like we were always asking that question and um and I and I and I think we ended up pulling. I, you know, this is this is also a part two question too. Mm -hmm. because it's like it really does pan out. Mm -hmm. It's the wh what happens between parts one and two is that there is a lot. It truly is like reinventing the concept and and sort of redoubling its efforts. But you have to see the whole thing. So that's mm -hmm. kind of yeah. I don't know how to answer more of that. Sorry. And then can you can you tell us, because, you know, as your friend, I do know a little bit of the backstory of why there's less intimacy this season. And I think people would appreciate hearing it. Could you could you share that with us? Yeah. Um, I mean, I asked uh, Sarah Gamble, creator of the show. Um, can I just do no more intimacy scenes? This is actually a decision I'd made before I took the show. I, I, you know, before I took one of the reasons that I've. I've, I don't think I've ever mentioned it publicly, but but it's one of the main things is like, do I want to put myself back on a career path where I'm just always a romantic lead? It's really important to me to to 
like fidelity in my in every relationship and especially my marriage is important to me and and um yeah it just got to a point where i don't want to do that you know and mm-hmm. like and of course before i took the show is there a question uh do 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 i have a career if i don't i mean you know think about every male lead you've loved yeah. if are they kissing someone are they are they doing a lot more than that um mm-hmm. And, you know, it's really not my desire to, so, and, you know, but I, but I, so I said to Sarah, like, I, uh, uh, my desire would be zero (laughs) to go from a hundred to zero, but I signed this contract. I I, Mm -hmm. I signed up for the show. I know what I did. You know, you you can't, you can't take this aspect out of the DNA of the concept. So, so how much less can you make? It was my question to them. And, and, and she didn't even bat an eye. She was really glad that i that i was that honest and she was sort of i want to say almost like empowered or she she yeah she had a really positive response Mm -hmm. she appreciated my directness and she appreciated that i was also being reasonable and practical and they they came back with a phenomenal reduction you know um (laughs) One might call it a breast reduction? No. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. I kind of heard of uh, at least a few celebrities in Hollywood, all women who have done that. Like I think Zendaya has made it part of her like standing standing part of her contract that she won't do uh, nudity. And I think that that is becoming more and more acceptable among actors, which I think is incredible. Um, I want to shout this, this actor out because I think it took a lot of courage and it cost him a lot. So Neil McDonough, who was one of the leads on Desperate Housewives, is like a devout Catholic and he considers even kissing to be an act of infidelity. And so he has, he told, um, producers in Hollywood that he was not willing to kiss and he got blacklisted. Like there was like backlash against him. And there was a period of time, he talks about this, you can you can find the interview, where no one would cast him. He was, like, punished for taking that stance. And, I, I mean, I think it's outrageous that that's what happened to him, but I also have so much admiration for someone who did it anyway and have admiration for you, Penn, for also sort of, you know, for I think it takes... being blacklisted. Yeah, to like, take, oh, yeah. like, I should take this out? Career, so. Yeah. Our ratings keep gonna, going down, guys. Give pens of Venmo information soon, but no, I think it takes courage to have a conversation like that when it's not the culture and it's not the norm, and people have faced sure. consequences for doing it. I think we'll I'm, realize that we need less and less of it. I've I've told Nava this before, but the Office, the the mm-hmm. love story between Jim Halpert and Pam Beasley, is one of the greatest love stories told in television. They mm-hmm. kiss once, yeah, on that show in like eight or nine seasons. Um, and I think we will just come to realize as a society that we just don't need it as much in every show, in yeah. every movie. Um, it doesn't need to be like that much of a plot device. It being a little less graphic and a little less in your face. Um, I liked that better yeah. as a viewer. I personally thought the giant prosthetic penis in my face no, in no, episode that. one was pretty classy. <laughs> that was insane. If, you know, you know when, when that's when I was like... <laughs> class <laughs> like, Nava and I again like we watched that episode together and mm. we freaked like we actually filmed ourselves we will release footage of this yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were just like chatting through the episode yeah. like talking about what's happening in the show and then we're just chatting and then all of a sudden we both like we're sitting we're like, on the couch <gasps> together like this and we just go separate directions really <laughs> So good. It's so get unexpected it, get it, get it. and Somebody so big. On it. <laughs> What's a penis? What's it doing here? Mom. How did it get in? Is it somebody closed the window? <laughs> what do you think is gonna surprise people most about this season, Penn? Uh apart from the prosthetic penis, I would <laughs> say I would say Yeah, that's a good question. Part two, maybe. Part mm-hmm. two. <laughs> I can't really say more than that. I said there was like, there was one episode, was it episode one where you got to speak French? And I was like, finally, Ben gets to speak French on an episode. Yeah, I think you, did, you, did, you did, you did, yeah. <laughs> you say I'm a couple sure things I, in I'm French. Pre- I think, I'm pretty sure all I said was excusez-moi, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty No, you sad. said more than that. No, yeah, you said you a little did. bit more. Yeah, because Sophie turned to me and she's like, he finally gets to use his French. <laughs> it's, you're always I, it's weird. French. I don't recall. How would I not recall that? Okay, well, cool. <clears throat> look out for it. So we'll have to find out who's right, Sophie versus Penn. It's my favorite, <laughs> my favorite antagonist. That's we gotta have a little spin-off. Sophie versus yeah. Yeah. Who remembers the season better? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> neither of us. Yeah. Not as the ref, and she's just like, like these, uh, these idiots. 
<laughs> okay, so we alluded to it earlier, but that scene in episode five where you are in the basement dungeon of this castle and you're in chains and Reese leaves you in the fire mm. and you yeah. scream, Reese, Reese. That was incredible, mm -hmm. first of all. Yeah, kudos, honestly, Ben. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. 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 It was so I haven't good. seen that yet, so I, I, it's I've, really I've seen good. a lot of it, but I haven't seen that. It's, it's really good. It's incredible. Um, well, what was it like filming that scene? And also, was there actually fire on set? And if so, yeah, what's there was it like actually fire. fire? <gasps> okay, wow. tell, get, Not get as into much. it, Pen. What was Not it? As much. That I okay. loved that scene because it was so intense. Yeah. I loved so it. we shot that the Thursday and Friday that Kendrick's record came out. Can we just so, pause on that? All the intensity. And that's what we're going to talk about that's now. That's the answer. I know that's what they want. I know that's what they want. I know that's what you want. We just need Kendrick to keep releasing albums. Okay. So um, and I got COVID, by the way, in that scene, because that scene took, took, took two nights, not, not full nights, but it's like we had a lot else to shoot those days, but so like twice I had to... Anyway, I got COVID in that scene, and... Um, it was pretty intense. I mean, I had like a lot of scratches all over my body afterward because there were like pebbles all over the floor and I was like, you know, spinning around and doing all this stuff Ooh, with wow. the chain. And it, it was, it was, it was, it was characteristic of like every season actually, I think Joe, go, 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 go flip it back. I'm pretty sure every season I get tied up in some way. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first season I just got beaten to like mercifully, mm -hmm. mercilessly to a pulp. And that kind of had that vibe. But like every season, I, you know, he's in some real like bind, literal bind. Mm -hmm. And um, and I find those scenes really enjoyable physically because it's like, you know, I often don't say much. And so, or I scream one word repeatedly. Oh. <laughs> Reese, Reese, no, no. <laughs> ah, guys. guys, the performance is just like that. If yeah, you yeah it's, just, it's just like that. That's what Sophie and I are marveling uh, over. And, and, and you keep wondering why I'm not getting the noms. <laughs> you know? Why? Why? Rise. If it's Rise. like that, if it's like that, I'm already blacklisted. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, there's, so, there's um. forces at work. Okay. Um, <laughs> back to the dungeon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that... It was a hard scene to shoot. Ed, for what it's worth, I mean, he has just monologue after monologue after monologue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, right there with us, kind of like ask, like trying to figure out what works. Mm. Um, and and it's, it's one of these things where it's like, he actually has so much to do and I have so little to do, but both, is, both are hard, you know? Both are, both are kind of at the extreme ends of yeah. the spectrum. And we have to support each other somehow, <laughs> you know, but it's like, yeah, so, so I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like that the fire was not as big as it is in the, in the final cut. I don't recall cause I've seen rough cuts and I don't really remember mm. exactly how it's all put together, but they had this, they had, they, there are these almost like these trumpets that like spew fire and it is so loud and hot. It is alarmingly loud and hot. We've, we've used them at least once before in a season prior when we blew up the house in mm. Um, mm. season three. And it's, um, yeah, it's just- So are you know. hot while you're filming it, like oh, physically? Oh, yeah, it's like a wow. lot of that sweat and dirt and just, it's just so physical, wow. you know? It's like that that scene was particularly exhausting. And then again, the next day, I sort of had COVID symptoms and then I, so it's hard to And you had to, to record an episode of Pod Crushed. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think that was when our, our show was Probably. coming out. It was we, when the show was coming out. We did like out. interviews and you out. were in bed. Yeah. 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 Wait. Okay, I did. I had this question when I was watching that scene where I was like, is he in pain? Like, is he hurting himself mm. in the chains? I was kind of. Wow, yeah. Mm. I was thinking, you must get hurt on that show a lot. Um, I do, actually. I do. I get a lot of bruises. I get a lot of, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just you can't deliver. And let's be clear, I'm delivering. <laughs> Um, you can't deliver. <laughs> Nafa's eyes just checked out of her head. They literally <laughs> still just stuck just in the back of my head. Her eyes picked up their bags and were like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I, uh, you're gonna have to tune into YouTube for what, uh, that <laughs> great. Pen just did. I'll, I'll take a screen job. Post it on her Instagram. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, I mean, I do. I do a lot of physical acting in it and it's like yeah. uh, you know at its best it's it's good jim carrey and at its worst it's bad jim carrey <laughs> it's nothing but love for jim carrey i mean he's yeah. amazing yeah and you can't 
It's not like you can have a stunt double. Do you ever have stunt doubles? I do have a stunt double, of course. But, you know, it, it's it's remarkable how little they're often used. Um, yeah, because you, for the your big face stuff, is for seen the so major, much. Major, major stuff. Yeah. And it, yeah, and again, I, I I I do really like that. It's a it's mm. a, it's a role I outwardly struggled with struggle with about um you know the kind of emotional moral dynamic and stuff. But but uh, and to play him for so long is actually quite exhausting physically and, and mentally. But I I do love the physical task. It's 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 one of the great joys of the role. This season, you know, um, in part one, Reese emerges as the villain and Joe is the hero, which we haven't really you know last Finally. season we. We had love be more unhinged than Joe last season, but I wouldn't say that Joe was the hero. And I wouldn't even say that love was necessarily a villain. Um, but this season, that that is kind of the dynamic. Joe is the hero. Reese is the villain. What was that like for you kind of playing playing the hero this season? Um, and I, everyone knows because I've revealed that I've seen the second part, but I was wondering this the whole time I was watching the first part. Joe feels so meek. Can I trust that? Like it feels strange to me. Meek, yeah, I remember when you texted me that. I, yeah, I was like, why is Joe so meek this season? <laughs> well, meek meaning like, uh, like, uh, more anger, more aggression, more intensity. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I do know that I felt like I was speaking even less than usual. Mm -hmm. He's doing a lot of thinking. Yeah, a lot. Um, yeah. Well, because he's, you know, he's rep he's completely repressing himself. He's mm. he's repressing himself yeah. to such a high degree that, you know, yeah, I think he is in this forced sort of, uh, he's in a forced state that doesn't really add up. But that's what part two is about. That's that's why I think part two is so rewarding. It's like mm -hmm. he, he just sort of keeps exploding in different ways. And that's, mm. you know, mm. that's what we're all Ominous. coming here for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, speaking of part two, is there anything that you can tease for us about part two? Like, for example, I haven't seen part two yet. Will we get to see more of Tati? Is that something you can share? I don't think I can share anything, to be honest, mm. without nothing? tipping the hat, in okay. it, yeah. uh, so to speak. There will be more hat. <laughs> That's what everyone wants. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's Everybody's been like, little. There's been very little hat this. Very season. little hat. That's true. Too much beard, not enough hat. That's <laughs> also, the, that's the recap. first season, no cage. And I want to tell you guys that the reason why is because Sophie and I stole it, <laughs> and Penn will be in a cage for most of season. Recording five podcast. Crush. Tune into yeah. YouTube. Four, it was the only so, way we could get yeah. him to do it. <laughs> I did think in the first episode, I was like, now how would they get a cage to London? <laughs> well, he would just have to, he would have to buy have to the build supplies it. again. Build it. You know, which, yeah. yeah. Pen, can you do an iconic Joe line in a British accent? Please. Uh, well, I'm going to reveal, so. <laughs> what what did Moses say is in right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey. So I, it's so iconic. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't why? Why did they it? have you with a British accent <laughs> yeah. in this season? I, I saw that. Absolute mystery. Went, I know. <laughs> You're, You're so working it, working it, working it in your mind, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unfathomable. Unfathomable. Which of these <laughs> is the iconic Joe? And are you? What? Wait, what did you see comments on that? No. Um, when you and Netflix released the trailer, there were several comments that were like, I was really hoping part of his persona was being a British professor. People really wanted to hear you speak in a British accent. Yeah, so here's the thing. I, I'm going to go ahead and take a fun answer and make it make it boring and long. As oh, okay. <laughs> great, no. great. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> uh, no, strap in. No, it's, it's really short, actually. All it is is I can do an accent. However, it's... I, I'm like an all or nothing person. I, 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 it's so hard to just do. I'm a very rhythmic, like kind of mimic. I can totally get into that and drop into that. It's very hard to do. I don't. I'm not familiar enough with it at this point. Even like while I was there, I probably could have done some of it. Mm -hmm. And even I think some of the some of my castmates were like, "Oh yeah, you really could do that." But it's so hard for me to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I I feel like it's very rare. It, it would be it would be a missed opportunity though if we didn't yeah. get you to okay, at least fine. say Let's hello. Try. You. What, what, what should I say? Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, that's good. There, hello, there you. You that's the one. Well, well, well. Here, well, here's yeah. the question though. It's cultural language is not just like the words. It's cultural. Would would he say hello? You would he? I mean, isn't that probably quite American? Like, what would do? What would a greeting be? It would be like, like. <laughs> Cheerio. No, I'm just kidding. Cheerio, mate. Americans always overdo it, and sometimes yeah. it just sounds sort of like. 
top of the morning. Top, top. Top of the morning, love. <laughs> you said, oh, yes, I no, wait, you, you, did, you did it good. You did you well. Did it well you did when it. I cut you off. Yeah, see, love. that's what I mean. It's really hard when everybody's listening. And you know, guys, we have millions yeah. of listeners. Let's, <laughs> yeah, just, let's, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. let's just blow Manifested. them off right now. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah. Um, no, I, I do think it's very rare for an American actor to do a good British accent. You can't take them seriously. But more and more, I'm watching shows and I go to look up the actor and it's a British actor yeah. doing an American accent. They can do it so well. I, I want to I wanna hot take push back. Oh, push pull. Okay. Sophie versus Penn challenge. Go. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, I, I actually feel like more than ever I'm noticing bad American accents oh, really? from non-American actors. And I think we... I, so I hear you. There's probably... There's a lot of them who do it very well. Yeah. But I think there's just as... I want to dispel what might be a myth. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a, it's just a perception. It's that whole like... Yeah. Anglophone thing we still have. Like, they're not better, guys. They're not Sophie better. Sophie knows. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to burn any bridges, but there's a movie that came out this year where almost everyone in the cast was British or Australian playing a particular kind of American, and I thought it was laughable. I'm like, mm-hmm. cast one American, at least, yeah, in this, right. like, iconically right. American thing. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. And I think it's that true. happens too often. Too we, we do have this Anglophone um, thing where we'll cast all of these non-American actors. Mm. Don't bat an eye. We don't bat yeah, an eye. True. And yet we really don't do that for other nationalities. Mm. Um, that's true. I, as 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 much, it's the can we, can somebody stand up for Americans? <laughs> Come on, wait. Man. Speaking can of, can somebody <laughs> speak up for the little guy? Speaking of anti-American sentiment, I did really enjoy the little quips about you being American in this season mm-hmm. because I'm half British, half American, and I ended up in the U.S. and my sister ended up in the U.K. Mm. And even between the two of us, I it felt familiar to me the mm. the one-sided <laughs> hatred <laughs> from people in the uk towards people in america oh yeah i and i love it i i i felt right at home <laughs> in, so uh, in, uh, in london and you know my wife is british yeah and uh I, yeah there's something about, i i enjoyed apart from being a, a, away from my family for so long um and you know the continued sort of covid of it all it sort of hmm. sort of sort of put a damper on yes. things but um but i loved being there uh, just as a place it was like it was i i remember it so fondly yeah hmm. pen before we wrap did you have any questions you wanted to ask the viewers me and sophie or questions that people could answer on instagram i want to know how many of you still think love is coming back <laughs> mm. <laughs> Honestly, I just want like a number. I just okay. want to know. I know people are really holding on. <laughs> it's a high on. number. They're yeah. holding on, yeah. guys. I'm so excited to do the part two discussion because then we can really get into everything. And just then say it one more time: part two is super, super juicy. We'll be You'll just, and in fact, about. you have to subscribe for that one. Yeah, it's, uh, you can't. We'll be able to tell weird if thing you have where it. like you, yeah, yeah. You, you're not going to get that episode if you don't. <laughs> Like and subscribe. We're going to hack into your Netflix accounts and make sure it doesn't show up. Um, We've had several people suggest that we close by saying keep crushing it. And I think it's a good idea. So I'm going to do it. You guys can say that. Keep crushing it. (laughs) (laughs) Asshole. Everyone else, keep crushing it. Keep on crushing. I will try to be simple and direct, mm-hmm. said me never. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs>